Uh, welcome everyone to today's Zoom call in partnership with the Social Venture Fund for Jewish Arab Equality and uh, Shared Society and the Jewish Funders Network. This is the third call in our series on Arab citizens in emergency context. Uh, this call brings our focus to the impact of the war on Jewish Arab relations in Israel. My name is Liron Shoham and I'm director of the Interagency Task Force on Israeli Arab Issues. On our previous discussions, uh, already we saw issues of severe deterioration, increase in mistrust, and fears of escalations like those of May 2021. Um, those fears were already central to the mapping and evaluation of emergency concerns in the aftermath of the attacks of October 7th and the war in Gaza. Uh, these were central concerns alongside needs for food, medicine, uh, shelter, counseling, and, and training. As the war continues, these challenges and the need to preserve calm, peaceful relations between Jews and Arabs and a foundation for Jewish Arab relations in the country going forward, these, these concerns are becoming more paramount. From the first day of the attacks, shared society leaders jumped into action, mobilizing campaigns, volunteers, and coordinating between and among them. Um, Miranda, our, our uh, coordinator, our, our uh, programs and operations coordinator, will link to a document in the chat where we have been uh, tracking different emergency response coordination efforts, and that describes some of the coordination that is coming together in recent days. Uh, today, however, we're going to take a deep dive with three civil society leaders into different ways that the war is impacting Jewish-Arab relations in attitudes on social media and mixed and shared spaces. We're going to get a deeper picture from them of the impact of the war and the needs in the field. We're fortunate to have with us uh, Owen Gerlitz, CEO of Accord, uh, Social Psychology for Social Change, who will give an overview of the status and impact on Jewish Arab relations today. Sausan Zahel, legal advisor of Emergency Coalition in Arab Society, Tawale, who will take us into the realities experienced by Arab citizens. And Amir Badran, member of the Tel Aviv Jaffa City Council and founder of the Guard of Jewish Arab Partnership in Tel Aviv Yafo, who will speak about the need to prevent escalations. Thank you all for joining us. We have one hour for this call. Um, please feel free to put your questions in the chat as we go. And uh, now with no further ado, Ron Gerlitz, we will begin with you. Um, Ron, Accord is involved in preserving Jewish Arab relations in a number of ways, including gathering data and research and support for uh, mixed workplaces and institutions. Can you please start us off with an overview of Jewish Arab relations right now and what social psychology points to as important interventions? Yes, for sure. Uh, thanks, Liron, and the task force for the task force and uh, SVF for inviting me. I, I, I'm very privileged to be part of this discussion. Uh, and, and, and yes, I'll be happy to address your challenge. I will also want to um, I want to describe what I see as the status of relation and also to suggest what I think are the important things now that philanthropy and civil society should invest in. So I want to share with you really some few points uh, that are part of a deep research and thinking that uh, has been done in accord in the recent weeks since the war began. Of course, I'll speak more about what happens in the Jewish side because there are two Arab speakers here, which I'm sure will present much better than me the Arab perspective. And I'll begin by saying that in accord, we identified the current situation as a situation of collective trauma. And collective trauma is, is a very different situation from what we have known in the past, in the, in the previous cases of escalation between Jewish and Arabs in Israel, and even if escalation between in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, of course, I'm speaking about the recent decades. Now, what social psychology teaches us that happen in a situation of, of collective trauma is that there, there are very high level of collective and personal fear that exist in the both groups. We speak, we, we don't even speak just about a regular fear, but we speak about a kind of existen existential fear that create linkage and association to the previous collective traumas of the both people, of the Holocaust for the Jewish people and, and the Nakba for the Palestinian people. Now, this situation of collective trauma and link linkage to previous trauma together at the Jewish side, a deep level of victimhood because of what happened on October 7th, that create a situation of what we call a moral licensing. And a moral licensing in this context is a very bad situation because if the, and of course, I'm, when I'm saying Jews and Arabs, I gen generalize, but if Jews connect the situation to the ultimate evil, 
and to the ultimate danger for our existence than the principle that on a regular day I put on myself, on my, on my country, become irrelevant for this situation. And, and this, for example, can explain the, the, uh, the severe intolerance among Jews towards Arabs and also, unfortunately, supported violence. And indeed, in the Jewish side in Israel, we see, collect, we see personal and collective fears in a level that we have never, we have never seen. I'll show you the data very soon. We also, in addition to the data, we, we speak that people are not sure that they will continue to live in Israel. People are not sure that Israel will continue to exist with all those things about the other wars that might be begun in the coming days, weeks, hours, I don't know. And this, and I want to say something which might, might sound sensitive. All this create a psychological situation that if it wouldn't lead to AIDS, extremism and racism against Arabs, it would have been a big surprise. Of course, I'm not justifying it and I'm not saying it's moral, but it would have been a big surprise. And indeed, in our research, we see a significant decrease in the level of fear and, uh, and aid. I will show you now really just two slides out of a very big research because the time is very, my time is very short. Liron, do, do you see the slides? Uh, can someone tell me if you see the slide? We yes, see, but oh, okay, you perfect. need to show it. It's not in mode. Okay, I, okay, I, I know, but I, I don't know. It's, it's just two sides, so we'll stay with it. So, according to, in the recent years, five rounds of research about attitudes of Jews and Arab. Uh, the previous one, uh, you can see all the five. The last one was two weeks ago. The, the upper line, the blue line, is the line among Jews of... Uh, of fear among uh, Jews towards the Arab, and you can see really a significant increase. And and and, and the, the the next slide uh, in which I can show you the level of the aid, you can see something which is really I mean see the significant increase of aid of Jews against Arab compared to all the previous time we measure it, include very shortly after my 2021. Okay, and those numbers are really a frightening numbers. I mean, there is a question which I'm sure that comes to your mind, why there isn't increase among the Arab side, but uh, uh, my time doesn't allow me to address this question, so maybe I, uh, and I'm afraid from Liron, so maybe I will address it uh, uh, later. Uh, now, you see now, I mean, I tell you, I see on your faces what I see on my face when I saw the data for the first time last week. It's really a frightening data. Now, when we speak about the Jewish people, people that feel that are, and, and for many of us, for the first time in our life, I mean, many Israelis, Jews feel that are, they are under accidental threat. I mean, one can argue that there isn't accidental threat, but it doesn't make a change. That's what people feel. So they see the world in, in a situation of black and white. And in this situation, those, are the, those that are part of your group can protect you. And those that are not part of your group they are, the, they, are, they are your enemy, and, and the Arabs are not part of the, of the Jewish group. And that's led so many Jewish Israelis to see them very negatively, and unfortunately, even as part of the enemy. And, and that's, of course, a very bad situation. Now, about the Arab side, I would say just one sentence. The Arabs find themselves, and I'm sure that you will hear it very soon, blamed, discriminated, and silenced. Now, while they, they are themselves in the sight of the victims of what happened on October 7th, Arab citizens were killed and murdered in October 7th, and Arab citizens helped Jewish people to run away from the kibbutzim. And, and are, all of them are against violence, and their leader condemned the violence immediately after October 7th, and they didn't go out to demonstration, and, and nevertheless, they are being blamed and silenced. And of course, this created a very, very difficult psychological situation. Now, I want to claim that there is a very dangerous cocktail here of six elements. First, as I said, a very high level of fear of Jews from the Arabs. There is also fear of Arabs from the Jews, but again, this you will hear, I'm sure, from the Arab speaker. People are literally afraid that the Arab that work in the supermarket can be, in some way, influenced by the Hamas and do and art them. Second is a very high level of hate. The third component 
is that the homogeneous, homogeneous perspective of the other group became very solid. So for, in this situation of collective trauma, it's difficult for the Jews to differentiate between the Palestinian in, the, in Gaza that support Hamas, does in Gaza does, doesn't support Hamas, the Palestinian in the West Bank, and the Arab citizen in Um al Fahem that work with them in the same company. And in his Facebook, he has Palestinian flag because he has a Palestinian identity. And, and all the other groups look the same and, and look the, the, as the one that is dangerous and support uh, violence. The fourth element is a daily contact between Jews and Arabs, even, this, even during the war. Scores of thousands in, during the war, hundreds of thousands in the regular days of Jews and Arabs meet mainly in the employment market and in the big cities. And very soon, in a few months, also in the academia, when the academic year will open. It means that the one that you are so afraid from him, <laughs> when you go to an hospital, you see him uh, as sits near you in, uh, in, in the hospital, and you see also in the employment places. The fifth element, which is a new element, which we didn't know before, it's a totally distrust in the state that will come to help you. Because what happened in October 7th, that people, I mean, you know what happened. The, the state, people were waiting for hours, for day for the army to save their, the, to save their life. And in many cases, the army didn't come and couldn't save their life. And, and you know that in the months since what happened, it was proven that the Israeli government in so many case, ca cases is incapable of support, the, uh, the people that needed support. So people, people lost faith that the, that, that the state will help them. It means that while some parts of the, Israel, of the Jewish Israelis were always afraid that maybe the Arab in the bus will take a knife, but they knew that if someone will do it, so like all the Israeli police will be there in a minute. Now they don't think so because they say that the, the, the people that needed the Israeli army and police didn't get the help. Yeah. So people really feel helpless. And if we think about the Arab side, which they also are afraid from the Jews and, they, and there are cases of, of violence. So who is going to protect them? The police? The police that is under the minister whose all the political career was in creating aid against the Arabs? This is the police that will help the Arabs that are now under threat from the Jews? So both sides really feel that, they, they, that, that no one will come to help them. The sixth point, and, and maybe it is the most important point for me to mention to you, in the first five points, I mentioned you things which are like natural in this situation of, of conflict and collective trauma. People are afraid, people have aid, etc. I mean, it's very bad, but it's kind of natural. But there is another element, and this is the unnatural, systematic and organized efforts of factors in the extreme right wing in Israel to increase fear from Arabs and to lead the violence. There is a whole system of distribution of fake news about the Arabs in these very hours being organized in Umel Fahem and in Haifa and in Jaljulia in groups to attack and preparing the guns and are going to attack Jews. Those posting Facebooks get scores of thousands of shares and hundreds of thousands of Israelis believe to those things. And those things are not created by some Michigan in some settlement in Israel. We know that some of these organized efforts are coming from Otsma Yehudit, which unfortunately is a party which is part of the Israeli government. And those, those efforts are successful and severe increase you know, fear among Jews towards Arabs. And, and the relation, the, the result of all these six, six elements is a very dangerous cocktail uh, that, that lead to a demand to distance, uh, distance Arab employment places and from uh, the public space, to silence Arab and not let them to express what they think in the social media. And most important, it can result in eruption of violence between Jews and Arabs in Israel. And we should remember that uh, it can be much more violent than May 2021. There are so many weapons uh, in the Jewish and Arab side. Um, now, it is important for me to mention that in, the, in this time of what I see is a really as a very big danger for escalation of the relation towards severe violence between Jews and Arabs, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of efforts to avoid it. And those efforts are in two fronts. One front is of the civil society, 
And, and I really want to say that you can be proud of many organizations that you've been invested in in the recent decades. I can tell you first and that there are now scores of organizations working days and nights, and even in a good cooperation, much more than in regular days. And we are doing everything to try to put our efforts and resources to avoid escalation. It's really very impressive to see so many uh, leaders and organizations working in this front. And the second element is even more important, forgive me, than from NGOs in Israel and you. Those are decision makers in the regular places in Israel that are also working out to avoid escalation. I'm speaking about like managers of private, comp of private companies, leaders of universities, I mean, some of them, not all of them, P even people that work for the government, even some of the minister. I mean, you might have heard the minister Moshe Arbel, the interior ministry, he had a very strong public statement against distancing of Arab from employment places and about the shared future of Jews and Arabs. And of course, not all the people in these places, for sure not in the government, are having these voices, but in many, many places, and for sure, uh, for sure mayors and um, municipality leaders express voices and are doing efforts to avoid escalation in the violence because everyone, not everyone, all of those factors understand that Israel has a big interest to avoid going into violence. Um, I've asked by Liron to say shortly what Accord does to address the situation. So I'll say only, we are doing many things, I'll say only one thing, and Liron I'll finish really in one minute, in two minutes. Uh, the, we, we put a lot of efforts to support uh, leaders of the shared spaces, especially in the employment market and in, and in the academia, and also to some extent in the mixed cities, to address the, the big challenges of relation between Jews and Arabs in these shared spaces in an effort to avoid those places going to, into violence and in, in an effort that those places will be a basis for healing and repairing the relation uh, when the war uh, ends. Um, Thank you, Olin. I do. I think that you gave us so much, so much food for thought, and it was uh, a really powerful framing. Um, hopefully, if people will be able to Q and A to come back to the different parts people want to hear about, and of course, we can share your contact information for people who want to hear more about Accord specifically. Thank you so much for that, and um, I want to move on because our other speakers are are also feeling their uh, Arab citizens who are feeling these this this collective trauma from their own perspective on the ground. And I want to move to Sausan. Uh, Sausan, you are the legal advisor for the Emergency Coalition for Arab Society, also known, you're a lawyer, I should say, um, also known as Tawareh. From your perspective, um, you know, Lauren spoke, spoke about the collective trauma and how much everyone is polarized and so afraid. How are you seeing this impacting Jewish Arab relations in workplaces, on campus, online? And and what are you, what are you, how are you involved? What is what is the response that Tawara is giving? Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Liron, for uh for this invitation. And uh, thanks everyone for uh, participating. Uh yes, so I have been uh I'm a human rights lawyer for the past 20 plus uh, years. Uh, I have been working in, I worked in Adala for more than uh, 16 years and uh, currently uh, I, um, I'm i working, I have my own practice uh, in Haifa and I'm also uh, teaching in Tel Aviv University. Uh, and in my capacity in my own office, I am uh, the legal advisor of the Emergency Coalition of Civil Society in Arab Society. It's a long name, but the summary is Tawarit, which means emergency in Arab society. And uh, what we have, basically this coalition, I, I'll just take a few minutes to talk about this coalition and why uh, why we suddenly are here and why what, what we are doing. Uh, we basically, this coalition is comprised of more than uh, 20 organizations. Uh, a lot of them have been operating uh, on a national level for more than 20, 25 uh, years. 
uh, women's organization, children or rights organization, uh, ACRI, for example, uh, land and planning organization uh, from all over the uh, fields of uh, of civil uh, society. And after the swarming of the uh, uh, Netanyahu, Smotrich and Ben Gvir government last year, uh, everyone basically understood that there is going to be another emergency after what we experienced in May 2021. Uh, the experience of May 2021 was our own trauma that we knew that it will happen because few years previous, there was the confirmation of the basic law, the Jewish nation state law, where we warned everyone on a political level and legal level and activism level that this basic law, the Jewish nation state law, will definitely give legitimacy and constitutional justification, not only to discriminate against Arabs, but also to be racist against Arabs. Uh, now, the Supreme Court didn't intervene in it. It refused to intervene in the petitions. And then we warned again that this will lead to something. And then May 2021 happened. And more than 5,000 people, 92% of them were Arabs. A lot of violence, people were afraid. And we knew that we need now, after Ben Gvir Smotrich got into the government, we need to gather our powers and our energies and our uh, uh, qualifications in order to be able to be ready when the emergency comes. And then the war happened. We didn't expect it to. We didn't expect to, uh, to 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 be challenged with a war on this scale. Uh, but here we are. Unfortunately, after the uh, uh, the attack of Hamas on October seven, and we immediately because we already had prepared, we immediately knew that we will have challenges against students in the in, uh, academic institutions. We knew that we will have challenges in suspending people from their own work. We knew that we will have arrests and, and, and incitements, but we never expected that it would be on this large and incentive and aggressive uh, level. It was on October 7th, parallel to the attack of Hamas, immediately there was the, the feeling I'm just I'm just describing my feeling and and my colleagues feeling immediately there were plans that were put in the drawer the drawer opened the plan were taken and a machine a factory of incitement that was already planned that was the feeling they knew how to uh, supervise and follow and track they knew who were the arab students they knew who were the activists they knew who were the influencers and there was this machine intensive machine of tracking everyone and i'm not talking only about extreme uh, israelis or extreme jewish a, a right-wing activist. I'm talking about uh, uh, a, a components in the Israeli society that we never really thought and expected that they will take part in inciting or tracking. Uh, once a person uh, is uh, known to be studying in a specific institution, and once the uh, uh, the uh, post on their own post uh, on their own uh, 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 personal social media uh, has been posted, immediately we are talking about a massive complaints to the institutions that will not leave you even with a time to reconsider whether to really open an investigation or open a disciplinary proceeding. And up to date, we have at least 102 students, Arab students in Israeli uh, 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 institutions, I mean academic institutions, colleges and uh, universities that in the majority, in the absolute majority of the cases, the posts on their social media do not comprise any illegal expression, they don't comprise any support or solidarity with Hamas, but they do comprise solidarity with uh, civilians in Gaza, solidarity or even strengthen with the wanting to show the Palestinian identity, wanting to show the 
uh, Islamic identity. We, we see a lot of people who were suspended from universities or even work just because they posted uh, Quran uh, uh, pieces uh, uh, that uh, generally uh, uh, Muslims, Arab Muslim post when, you know, when, when, when it's rough time. Uh, I have a student, for example, that was that got a disciplinary hearing which, because she uh, uh, shared a photo that has a, what a hypocritical world in Arabic and in English, that's it. I was able to cancel it, but she was, you know, the, she was basically under disciplinary proceedings. I have a worker that was suspended or called for a hearing by her employee just because another employer complained that she I, I, I heard her say to another colleague that she watches Al Jazeera because she doesn't know Hebrew, so she watches Al Jazeera. I have another that I have others that complained that they were uh, fired just because they held a political conversation at work or a political conversation with their uh, peers and colleagues in the uh, universities. I'm not gonna get, I don't have much time, I'm not gonna get into a lot of it, but we started from day one getting uh, a, a getting a approaches and the request to uh, for legal representations and providing legal advice. And this is basically what we are doing in the legal a, a, a section where which, which I'm doing. We're of course doing a lot of things. We're providing emotional supports for those needed. We are, um, training uh, local councils or activists to uh, establish their own emergency uh, 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 emergency rooms uh, or forums in their own uh, uh, towns. Uh, we are uh, working uh, to uh, uh, make sure that the Bedouins in the unrecognized villages uh, are able to get all the support and needs that they uh, need, taking into consideration that they are exposed firsthand, physically, I mean, to the uh, rockets in the south. And we are also uh, dealing with uh, uh, the legal representation. So I represent uh, students, I represent uh, uh, employees, I have uh, given a uh, consultation and advice and representation for at least 65 employees until now, me alone. Uh, uh, not That's, of course, in addition to all the others that are being uh, <clears throat> dealt and treated by other uh, lawyers. Uh, I give consultation for people who are merely afraid from the incitement. I have a new phenomenon from today of a person who was uh, arrested for posting the absurd, uh, he was he was arrested for posting. He's an influencer. Uh, he posted a video two weeks ago about the uh, restriction on freedom of expression and the arrest and the political persecution by arresting people on legitimate uh, expressions. And then he was arrested for that post, and uh, uh, he was uh, released by a court uh, uh, decision. And the next day, he got to his own uh, business. Um, a, a, an announcement from the from Yisra Card, the credit card company, that they immediately stop all uh, uh, inter uh, all 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 the business or all the agreements with him, and uh, because of that, he is not able anymore to do any kind of uh, um, how do you say uh, card transactions. Yes, transaction with his uh, with his uh, with his clients and his bank account was closed. This is new, this is I'm just starting to see today. So if a person is being persecuted again in, in the uh, university or college and in his uh, employment in, in his uh, employment place and uh, generally in the environment where we are seeing as well just regular uh, violent assault from people that are just sitting in the park, Jews against Arabs. Uh, uh, or just incitement uh, in the uh, um, in the social media to an extent that a person will be even afraid to get out of their house. So we we are like Ron was talking about the collective trauma. We have our own not only collective trauma, but it's a collective trauma. It's immediate fear collectively and individually. We are also asking ourselves, is there going to be another Nakba, not only in Gaza, but also in Israel? Are we going to be deported? Are we going to be assaulted? Should I keep my house? 
And how is my relation with my Israeli peers going to continue? This is also a question that I am asking myself. Luckily, I'm in Tel Aviv University and I really feel very lucky to be in this place with my colleagues and my, with my friends, but students are afraid to come back. And most of the questions are, how will I go back to university knowing that my friend complained on me, my friend doesn't cannot see me posting anything in Arabic, can, cannot see me post any a, a Palestinian flag. If I post a, a, a chapter from the Quran, they think that I'm an enemy. If I post something from an Arab poem like Mahmoud Darwish, they complain on me, the incitement in social media and part of the Israeli public that will come back from the reserve army directly to the university's unemployment and then the interaction, the direct interaction between them, which this is fearing from this, this is hating this and fearing from the other group. And there is going to be a huge question, what was going on? What was going on? What was going on? What was going on? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so we are not dealing with something, we haven't seen that neither in the Lebanon war in 2006, neither in any, any war on Gaza, mainly on the 2014. And uh, I think that uh, it, it definitely, it definitely um, uh, is got back in not one step and not 10 steps, all the relations between uh, uh, Israelis between Jews and and uh, uh, and Arabs. Like when we're getting to a situation where uh, 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 even a professor that I uh, represented in K College was uh, who is a peace activist for the past thirty years, uh, Warda Warda Dr. Warda Sada, who has uh, been fired just because she was posting things that go align with her political activism, which was interpreted as uh, uh, supporting Hamas. And uh, so we are dealing as well with uh, 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 the, uh, it's not confusion, but I think it's because Ron said that everyone is seen basically as an enemy. So there's this confusion between us solid and having solidarity with our Palestinian people with the civilians in Gaza or in the West Bank or in or solidarity with with our own issues because what we are uh, uh, encountering is not something is not something simple it is political persecution on levels that we haven't uh, perceived uh, uh, before uh, so, but so, uh, so, so one more minute and then let's uh yeah so so no, I think that uh, I I delivered the message, and I prefer to wait for uh, questions, and I'll stop here. Thanks. I, I I mean, thank thank you. It's a lot. Uh, it's a very difficult reality to um absorb, and um, and I understand that a lot of the work that you're doing is really in this emergency moment, um, trying to to prevent, trying to support uh people who are undergoing this fear, undergoing this scrutiny, um, and maybe in so doing prevent um more such cases. Uh, I want to bring it now to Amir Badran, who uh, get, who's dealing with the fabric of relations, um, also out of concern for um, the, the, the position that young Arabs uh, in Jaffa and in Tel Aviv might find themselves in, but also very much to preserve um, a future for Jewish-Arab relations. Um, Amil, on October 6th, you were a lawyer running for the uh, now rescheduled local elections as head of Ir Lekulano, which means uh, City for All, a joint Jewish-Arab list. And then on October 7th, you stopped everything and launched the Guard for Jewish-Arab Partnership. Can you please tell us um, why and what it is the Guard does? Oh, you're muted. Uh, Amir, you're muted. There you go. You can Thank hear me? You. Yes. Okay. So, hi, everybody. Uh, I will just uh, say that one more sentence about it. Uh, I was also a candidate uh, to be mayor right. for the first time in the history of Tel Aviv Jaffa municipality that an Arab from Jaffa is, is really uh, giving this challenge and saying, I might be good enough as you. Uh, <laughs> this thing came uh, over and... Uh, 
yes of course we had to to stop it all when uh, when the work uh, when the war uh, begun uh, i immediately understand that there, there's nothing to be done on the election election or political side and we have to deal with other things we are in a wartime and this is a uh, uh, time for us to gather Jews and Arabs together, and and to understand that we have also to say few words about the lessons from the past from uh, May twenty one. Um, maybe maybe uh, most of you uh, do remember what happened at uh, May twenty one in mixed cities in Jaffa, Haifa, Ramle, Lod, and uh, and so on. But I will speak specifically about the city that I live in in Jaffa, that uh, uh, police was absent, was unexisting in crucial time to establish order and to dis de-escalate violence and uh, calls, uh, violent calls and acts uh, that we uh, knew that they will be coming uh, in the same day and nothing was uh, being done. So I experienced this in a very difficult way and there were lynch attempts uh, in uh, in uh, Batyam uh, of Arabs and even in even uh, even in in Jaffa itself. Uh, people came from the outside to attack Arabs. This is something very important to understand because, you know, um, um, we we do not live in a in a utopic place in Jaffa, but still we have a shared life between Arabs and Jews for very time, very long time. Uh, even before the creation of the state of Israel and until now. And when trying to keep it up, uh, it's not very easy, uh, but still. But what we had on May 21 was something that was completely broke up. And and uh, and this was, uh, uh, this is this is what uh, makes me be very, very afraid of what we will be risking uh, uh, the day after uh, the 7th of October. So, um, you know what we when what what we had then is that young people uh, had really to go outside and to protect our our city and our our properties and our mosques and our synagogues and our, uh, and not synagogues at the time at the time but now we're speaking about protecting them also and and churches because because we were feeling afraid of being attacked by Jews that was were literally coming into Jaffa from Batyam and from other uh, uh, um, exits of, of Jaffa. Uh, such groups such as La Familia, who are well known to being racism, racists and, and violent. And, and these guys, this, these Arab guys, Palestinians, minority of Jaffa, paid the price and they're still paying the price because many of them are still got arrested. Many of them are, are trained to court, are punished. May, some of them are jailed. They uh, they had to pay uh, um, big amounts of money and many of them have their future ruined completely. So we're in a situation that is very, very bad. And back then we tried to calm things after they exploded. So this time, what we were trying to do, we wanted to prevent the explosion from happening. So what did, what did we do? On October the 7th, the same day, uh, I understand that, that something very bad is, is going on and I had to do something. And I quickly asked uh, an emergency uh, uh, um, uh, meeting of an emergency coalition uh, a committee in Jaffa of all organization, Arab organization in Jaffa, saying that we have to meet to understand what is going on and how we are going to deal with, not to repeat the, the bad experience of May 21. And two cru crucial decisions were, were taken there. The first one is to resist provo provocation and to promote calm. Each group of us was asked to speak to his, his youngers and try to make them understand that they we do not want to be uh, uh, dragged to violence, neither to hate uh, uh, claims, and we should try to keep our mind and uh, to keep at home and to to let let things go through. So we won't get hurt this time, as we were paying the price till now. And secondly, the most important thing is the lesson that we had from May twenty one that we should. Do it together, Jews and Arabs together in the front line, 
residents, Jews in Jaffa should be our partners uh, while protecting the, the city. And this is what we are doing today. This is what, what we are trying to say. We, are trying, we want to give, to set an example that we can get through it, through this together and, and, and uh, Jews and Arabs and different, but what is being done on the national level uh, uh, um, Ron spoke about Smotrich and Bengvir and you know all their uh, hate claims and and they were uh, Bengvir is trying to to uh, uh, install a shooting brigade everywhere. He's giving arms to to all all people, all Jewish people in mixed cities and other cities. Because... There's, there's there's an initiative to set up what is called Kitot Kodenut civil defense units, and there is um a, a distribution of uh weapons. Uh, to, I, I accord, according to certain, uh, sorry, I I know uh, <laughs> according to certain criteria, um, but it is definitely raising a lot of concerns, uh, especially among Arab citizens, that um these civil defense units uh will will be primed to see Arab citizens as the first tribe. So we are showing the world that we can do it differently and with no arms, and we can do it together. And this is the message not only on the locals uh, level, but also on the national and the international level. So what? What we did on the 7th of October is uh, five hours after we uh, took this initiative, we had already uh, 500 people on uh, uh, on our webinar that people that uh, uh, were interested in what we are doing, what, what we are promoting, uh, which is something completely different about speaking of war and killing. And then, uh, and then uh, um, two or three days after, we were already more than 3,000 people that want to take part of it and want to be volunteers of something uh, active to be done. So this is something very, very important. And what we are doing since is that we are, uh, we, we set a, a hotline for people to call in with uh, with any community's issues so people can ask us for help in any in any uh in anything uh, uh some of them maybe are 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 uh, uh afraid to be alone at home or some of them uh do not know uh how they can get uh, something uh from the uh from the store because they are alone uh, with their kids and 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 some of them are alerting us of uh, of uh, things that are written in the in the websites or in uh, uh, in the net and uh, that people are trying to attack or to make an, a certain attack on, on a certain spot. Uh, so this is what we are trying. We are trying also to see if there are fake news or not, and and what is not fake news. We are tr we try to reach with the with the police uh, uh, security forces and with the municipality and with the firemen and so on and so on. Um, we're trying to um, to do it twice a week, posters of solidarity throughout the community in Tel Aviv and in Jaffa, Jews and Arabs together. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will do it uh, now after we will finish uh, uh, this uh, this webinar. I will have to go out to, to uh, put some posters. Uh, we're gathering donations uh, for both, for uh, Otef Aza and for Bedouins in the south and the unrecognized villages. Uh, and uh, we already did that, and now we're working on a new project, which is uh, uh, we're gathering food and medicines and and all needs uh, uh, for the families in our community, uh, Jews and Arabs together in in, in Jaffa, because Jaffa is uh, we have a a, a huge uh, number of of uh, very weak um, uh, citizens and families that uh, we should try to. Uh, um, we can we we are seeing it happening that uh, there's a big big problem uh, facing it. Uh, um, uh, they do not many of them are fired. Many of them are not able to work or to have any income, and and some of them many of families are orphaned. Uh, many of them are are women alone, and, and so this is this is creating us a big big problem. Um, yeah, how is how. How is your work received? Received? Uh, I know you have more to share, but how how is your work received by uh, the wider community? I know you said you have lots of volunteers. How do you feel that this is um, working to look at Jewish Arab relations the day after, as as this very ter difficult situation continues? The situation is 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 uh, is bad. 
And we are, we are fearing, both sides are, are, are in a frayed situation, Jews and Arabs, but still we're trying to give hope. So I, I, I was trying to be, to say, what can I say to give hope to finish, to finish this situation uh, and still being realistic? Uh, and and, and, and uh, um, speaking about myself, I'm, I'm very optimistic. So I'm, I'm trying to be realistic and optimistic at the same time. And I'll, I'll say that something that I already told you, uh, Liron, um, that every day that passes, that I wake up in the morning and the streets didn't burn in Jaffa, I'm relieved. Uh, this is not something very optimistic to say, but this is something very realistic to say and still being very optimistic for the days coming. Still, I think that many is to be done, and we are really working very hard in Jaffa to gather Jews and Arabs to these activities while we are having, I will say, many Jews coming to these activities. And I'm very proud to see these the most organization in, in Jaffa, Palestinian organization that are here and in a, in a very... Uh, uh, radical way saying that we will work it together with Jews on the front on the front line. Even Imam mosques, Imam mosques are saying that this is something that we never heard. We're still facing many many problems because we are working with almost nothing. We're trying to 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 work in in a in a professional way because you cannot uh, have three thousand persons that want to be active and to keep them and to uh, to uh, and to continue and to strengthen the network and partnerships with other organization uh, uh, on, uh, only on on voluntary so we need to be helped uh, and to try to see where where um, uh, funds uh, and uh, can can give us this help to continue our work because to tell you the truth I'm not working uh, for maybe two months now. Uh, first, it was because of the election for the municipality, and then I had to stop it all and to focus on this, our initiative of, of the uh, Jewish and Arab Partnership Guard. But this main project is, won't be able to continue if, if we will not find funds to continue it. So I, will, I really hope that uh, our message will be a hope message for everybody, not only on the local uh, level of Tel Aviv Jaffa, but even on the national level, and we are seeing it happening because uh, other other uh, cities and villages are calling us, mixed cities and, and and others, to to learn about our initiative. How does it work? How do we do things? Uh, to speak our about our experience and how can it be done uh, in their own cities? And this is something very very important that we are doing. And we are also sending a message to the national level to racists such as Ben Gvir. There are ministers in this government who are completely asking to, to make these streets burn. And this is something that keeps them in politics. And we're trying to say this is not the way that we are dealing with. We're trying to deal with hope and love between both sides. I know we, um, we are not dealing with the hardcore of the situation, the political one, the war one, and what is going on in Gaza. But we are trying to do it uh, step by step, and we are, and I hope that we will find a way to continue. Thank you so much. I think one one detail that you shared with me previously about the work that you're doing you you have you prepare groups of volunteers in in places in the city that might erupt in violence that are ready as soon as there's any um, indication that are ready to go there to deescalate to call police and to to, to document a protective presence exactly protective exactly. presence units. A protective presence is something very important that we are trying to we train people we train them we give them uh, a training before getting them into to the hotline uh, we train them before that uh, we send them in any hot spots because we do not want them to get hurt but we still understand the efficiency of their presence and well, when they are trained, they know how to de-escalate the violence. They do have the elements and uh, they can report on things that they can see. They can even talk and ask the police to come over because police uh, did not do exactly the job what is expected for him. And, and now if, if Jewish people can call them and, and be sure that police is coming is something very important, or even just talk to other people and say, 
look, we can manage together Arabs and Jews in Jaffa. We really don't need our, our protect and our help. Leave us alone and we'll manage. I, I want to point out, first of all, I want to invite every, anyone to plug questions into the chat. We're going to open it up for Q&A. Um, I, I want to say that throughout our work of learning about all the mobilization in the field, the few things that um, really come to the surface that might not be intuitive when you think about the emergency situation is how much um, organizations are involved in training and how much are involved in supporting and strengthening the organizations that are implementing. And maybe this is something to do with the, with, with the overall sense that Ron mentioned that really it's it's on the civil sector to mobilize and to, and to preserve the fabric of life right now. There's a lot of questions about leadership, but um, I think I heard, I, I know that that uh, Accord is involved in this and Amir is involved in this. Um, we have we do have a couple of questions. Um, Alan, were there any de-escalation squads on the streets in the cities in May 2021? Uh, Amir, what the 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 protective presence? This this is something that came out of um, out of May 2021. Was there something similar that emerged? We've heard stories about it in Ramle. I don't know if you heard stories about it in uh, Tel Aviv or uh, Yafo about de-escalation squads in the streets or uh, Sausam, Ron, if you heard about this. <clears throat> I didn't. I'm, I'm sorry? I said, I didn't hear about it. I didn't hear, no, I, I think that, um, I'll just, I remember, I know we heard in Ramle they had uh, already- Nice, I'm sorry? Uh, I, I know I know we heard about this in Ramle where they already had leadership forum that went out that mobilized and went to the streets very, very quickly, but we we heard about that because it was unique. Um, we have a question about Amir's initiative in Jaffa. Uh, as, is this being noticed or appreciated by the municipality? Is the municipality and this is a question, right? Like tell, I think okay. part of your initiative is about leadership is 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 about engaging leadership. Can you speak a little bit more about the role of yes, leadership? Yes, it's very sad, you know, it's very sad because the whole word is, uh, wants to, to understand our initiative, wants to speak about our initiative, wants to report about our initiative. A media for all around the world are, uh, are coming to see me uh, speak four languages. And I really uh, try to, uh, to uh, uh, give uh, um, um, uh, reportage and interviews to everybody. Uh, and I'm doing it uh, uh, for, for, for many times now, but still not even one Israeli media asked me to come and to speak. The mayor is running away from me and from our initiative. He doesn't really want to meet us instead of being the one that embraces us and, 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 uh, and, will, and, and, give, and, and um, give us his support and, and back up us and, and promote us, he is trying to avoid us. The same is with the police. You know, we're dealing with, with things that we are not, we are not responsible for the, for the security of, of, the, of the people. It's, it's the municipality and the police job. They are held responsible for that. This is what they didn't do in May 21, and we are asking them to do so. And I did it in a, in a, in a formal letter to them, but still, I I was as I was thinking that that in a certain way they will be delighted to be to to have a, a free channel with us a direct channel with us so we can deal with things in the in the second they happen because if there is this, if there is an escalation of violence uh, escalation somewhere they should be in, in direct contact with us and they're still trying to avoid us they're still trying to make me um, uh, be in contact with the lower level. Of the of the most lowest uh, police officer uh, and the same in, in in the municipality. So so I'm 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 sorry to say it. It's it seems crazy, but this is the reality. And, and we are hearing of similar guardians and uh, joint efforts popping up in other mixed cities. There are at least two in Haifa. There's the Jewish Arab uh, Emergency Center that was established in Rahat. Um, but I want to take your point about about leadership and on you spoke about decision makers and uh you you are seeing i, I want to take it up a level because there is this feeling that we have uh we hear from israel a lot and like looking from the outside that it 
civil sector organizations and volunteers all mobilized out of a sense that there is there is there is uh there's a vacuum and i'm curious um if you could speak a little bit about what you are seeing what kind of leaders you're seeing coming forward you talked about it before uh what can uh leadership do today and maybe let's say a few words about what more um could be uh could be asked of them yeah i'll be able to address it so as i said previously though they're, they're like conflicting forces. There are many leaders, and you've just heard from Amir, is one of them, and he's not the only one. There are many leaders in Israel, Jews and Arabs, that are doing the efforts from within the administration, from within the municipalities, and some of them outside from a civil society organization that are trying to avoid escalation. A lot, a lot of efforts are being put in mixed cities. And, and I think that's an issue, that's a point that we should point that there are not there are not enough efforts that are put, being put by uh, civil society and by other factors in Israel in the factors in the regular Jewish cities, which might be the place in which the next violence will happen. I think that we are a little bit kind of preparing ourselves for the previous war because the previous escalation happened in the mixed cities, but the coming escalation might happen in a regular Jewish city in which some of the young people are full of hate and fear against the Arabs. And, and Arabs are, you know, they are going, they are doing their businesses, they are going as customers in these places. And this can lead us, lead us to a cases of violence. And, and we almost saw it 10 days ago in Atania. In Atania, there was a very violent event that we, have, we were very close of Jews killing Arabs in the campus in Atania. And by the way, it is interesting that while all the mayors in the mix, or at least all the mayors that I heard of, are very vocal, trying to avoid things getting out of control, when this incident happened in Natalia, the mayor said that she's going to ask Arab students not to come into Natalia. And, and I want to tell you, there is a kind of lacuna here in the side of the philanthropy and, and in the side of us in this civil society in Israel. We are so much invested in the mixed cities and not invested in the places in which in which violence can erupt really in hours of days. And 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 I think that all of us should should hurry up and put efforts also in this uh, list of cities in Israel, which are which are uh, like candidate, okay, kind of candidate to places in which violence will uh, erupt. And and the. The, the second point, Liron, I want to make, and, and the last point about leadership is to relate to what I told you before about like this very negative leadership that is acting. And I, I cannot, I cannot, I don't have a way to overemphasize it. Leaders in Israel, inside within the Israeli government, and Amir also mentioned, are working days and night to create violence between Jews and Arabs. If you go to the Facebook page of the Ministry of Internal Security, the page humiliate Arab citizens, humiliate Arab citizens. And I think that on our side, the leadership, our, in our side, the leadership is not enough acting and fighting, okay, and trying to weaken and trying to, uh, uh, to really fight, of course, not in a violent way, with this effort of the extreme right wing. And, and if, giving you just one example, the whole thing of the fake news. 30 okay. seconds. So, okay. Okay. so, so I, I, I would just say that fighting fake news is one of the most important things and it's not being done enough. Thanks. Okay, so before I give Sao on the last word, I just want to say a couple of things. With our next call we will do on, we have to do several calls on Jewish Arab relations because it's such a deep issue. The next call will talk about strategies on formulating a strategic plan across the field. We'll have an invitation for that soon. Also on December 4th, uh, we're partnering with the SBF on an in-person meeting. It'll, there'll also be hybrid options and Miranda will put an op uh, a form for registration for that that will go really, really deep into these issues. Sao Sun, in terms of the absence of, um, of a, of a national approach to dealing with these issues. Can you tell us about the importance of a coalition like Tawara at this time? Yeah, it's uh, it's an absence of national approach and it's the feeling among a lot uh, of people that uh, the political leadership uh, is not there for them. And then, yeah. and this is why uh, uh, the work of this coalition is very important because it is creating a web, basically a web of 
uh, or civil society organizations that are experts in different fields on the ground, Israeli and Arab organization focusing only on Arab society, while having, on the other hand, a gathering and building a web of volunteer coordinators in more than 20 towns all over Israel, not only in uh, mixed cities, but also in small Arab towns that we know that violence might get erupted because of the entrance or expected entrance of extreme uh, right wing uh, to the uh, Arab towns, like also what happened in May 21. These coordinators basically help us, uh, volunteering by the way, help us bring all the information about any incident or event that is happening, whether it is trying to track down uh, fake news on social media, whether incitement in social media or, on, or, or physically, whether arrests, whether students that they know about that are suspended or employees, uh, uh, any kind of uh, like the, the attack on the uh, with Mavit Laravim on Natanya students, they also were the first to bring the information uh, to us. So we are a web on a grassroots web that is on the one hand on the ground that brings the information to the a, a, a wide range of civil society that is part of the coalition together with the legal department that I am heading. And I think that uh, what is unique with this coalition is the ability to provide a holistic a approach to a lot or major issues so that people will feel that they have a place to call or they have an address to 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 uh, to call and uh, get their own uh, uh, needs met and it's important to mention the tuar is an arm of the national emergency information center uh, for arab society which is a government and civil society connection meaning there is a link there is a, there's an active link of uh, integrating uh, issues in Jewish Arab relations uh, with um, government to to government response. It's not part of the government. It doesn't it's have relation. The no, national, no. It's supported. It's supported it's, by the Ministry of Social Equality. No, 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 no. It's, uh, oh, it's uh, right. the National yeah, Emergency Information Center. Yeah. So let yeah. This is important because we're not taking any money from the state, so that we are able to be free. All organizations are free to continue working in their own uh, uh, field and in their own uh, uh, way. Uh, we are part of the National Mayor Committee of Arab Local Councils, who probably work with uh, uh, with with others, but. We don't. We are not part of the government, and we don't want to be part of the government. Okay, thank uh, you for the clarification. We are to own our independence. So, just important. Thank to you know. for the clarification. On the on that note, um, thank you all for staying with us. We're we're over time. Thank you to all of our speakers who um, stepped away from your twenty four seven work on the ground and all your hard work. Thank. Uh, we hope to see you again soon.